B-Ray shop. Today I'm going to be changing the oil and filter on this 1986 XL600R. So let's get started. Now this XL600 differs from your standard motorcycle in the fact that this is what's called a dry sump engine. Which means that your engine oil is actually contained in the backbone and the down tube section of the frame. As a matter of fact, the, the dipstick's right up here behind the steering head. And the reason why they do that is that allows them to make that crankcase a little bit smaller so you have a little bit better ground clearance. So it makes it a little bit different when you go to changing the oil and filter and, and also your oil checking procedure. So let's get started and we'll get that oil out of there. Now the first thing you'll want to do is remove the skid pan, which we've done here. Then next you're going to take out your engine oil drain bolt, which is going to be located just in front of the shifter right here. Next you want to drain the frame and the oil drain bolt for the frame is actually the same piece of hardware that holds the skid pan in place. That's this bolt right here. So we'll take both of those out and uh, get that oil out of there. There's one item here that's often overlooked when folks are doing oil changes on these engines. And that's your primary strainer screen. And it's located right here where this fitting is in the bottom of the oil tank. So let's take that off and take a look at it. This strainer here looks to be in pretty clean shape, so we're just gonna rinse this out and solve it real good. We'll inspect that O-ring and replace it if needed, and then we'll put all this back together. Now you can see where this is pretty important, how this can be overlooked, uh, especially if you have one that you've uh, smoked a clutch in it. All that clutch material is gonna get caught in that screen, and if it does, it can obstruct it, and it can starve the engine for oil and it can damage it, so be sure you check this every, every so often. The engine oil filter is located behind this little cover right here. So let's take these three bolts out. We'll get that filter changed. Now when you go to install your new oil filter, it's got a little spring back here that keeps the filter pressed against the outer cover. And what I like to do to kind of hold that in place while I'm getting that filter put on there is I'll put a little dab of wheel bearing grease on it and then just uh, set it in the case there. Now hold it in place. Now, a word of caution on these oil filters. You want to be real careful that you put this thing in the correct way. Uh, the way it's made, uh, it'll actually go on but either direction, but if you put it in incorrectly, it'll actually stop the oil flow to the top end of the engine. It'll ruin the head on it. And uh, the way you know which is the correct way on these, now if you're using an original OEM Honda filter, it's marked on the outside. It says which side faces out. But uh, what you always want to remember, your cover's got this little snout on it, and the filter's got this little O-ring here. The snout always fits into the O-ring, just like that. So you just put your filter in place. And when you go to reinstall this oil filter cover, it'll go in any position on the case, but you want to be sure that you line up this oil passage here with the oil passage on the back side of the case here, just like that. And uh, total capacity for this machine is approximately just a little over two quarts. Now what you want to do here is you want to add this oil very slowly and just check it every little bit with the gauge until it uh, shows that the oil tank is full. Now that's not going to have the, the oil level right where it needs to be at so what you're going to want to do is uh, start that machine up, run it for a couple of minutes and then recheck your oil level. And you may have to do this several times until you get all the air purged out of the tank. And that way you know you've got the engine oil at the correct level. Another little note to be aware of too. On these dry sump engines, if you have a machine that has sat for any length of time, it could be as, as short as a week. You want to start this thing up and run it for a little bit before you check that oil level. Because what will happen is uh, all the oil that's contained within the tank if this machine sets for a while, that oil can actually drain down into the crankcase. 
And so if you check this oil level before you start the engine, it's going to show to be very low or maybe even completely empty. So if you inadvertently put oil back in that tank, then when you start it up and it purges all that oil back into the tank, it's going to be overfilled and you're going to have a heck of a mess on your hands. So, alrighty guys, well that's going to do it for this edition of D-Ray Shop. As always, appreciate y'all watching. Y'all have a good one. We'll see y'all next time around.